So, we will continue our discussion on principle of hydraulic machines and system design. Uh, today we will discuss about uh, a few important uh, phenomenon uh, which are NPSH that is cavitation which is a very undesirable phenomenon for the pumping operation and effect of swell on the cavitation. So, to start with uh, we will discuss what is cavitation, why it is occurring and if it occurs then what would be the problem and how we can prevent cavitation from the pumping operation. So, for to do that I will just draw a schematic of a red, uh, where a radial flow pump is installed to uh, uh, deliver a particular uh, discharge at a given height. So, if I draw a pumping station, so suppose schematically I am drawing this is a centrifugal pump and this pump is used to cater or pump is used to supply water in a certain height and it is and it is drawing water from a sham which is placed a certain height below the pump axis. So, here pump axis is the impeller axis, pump datum is the impeller axis, here pump datum is the impeller axis and this radial flow pump is installed in a place where the pump is used to supply pump is used to supply this radial flow pump used to supply water maybe q meter cube per second against a head of h. So, this pump is used to supply q meter cube per second water against a head of h in a reservoir while it is drawing water from a reservoir which is located say h s distance below the pump axis level and it is also supplying water at which is supplying water to a reservoir which is again located h d distance above the pump axis level. So, now question is whenever pump is running then you know uh, cavitation might occur. What is cavitation? Let me talk about a few words about this. Cavitation is a very common and it is not a desirable phenomenon at all. So, whenever pump is running I will discuss two important thing I mean uh, normally we go for pump installation in a flooded suction mode uh, not in a negative suction mode. So, whenever pump is running there is pump is I told you earlier that pump is a turbo machines which absorbs energy and here mechanical energy is converted to the stored energy of the fluid by and it is used to increase either by its pressure or velocity. So, we are talking about the pump is normally used to develop a head, so develop a pressure. So, whenever pump is running normally the cavitation occurs at the eye of the impeller, this is very important this cavitation which is not an which is not a desirable phenomenon at all which occurs in a pump at the eye of the impeller at the eye of the impeller that is at the entry to the pump that means that is at the inlet to the pump. Now, if at the inlet of the pump pressure is something and if the pressure suppose I am telling pressure that means where it is happening the cavitation is most likely to occur at the suction side. So, from this I can say cavitation in a pump cavitation in a pump which occurs at the eye of the impeller that is at the inlet of the impeller that means it occurs at the suction side. Now, if, if I assume the pressure of the suction side is P s and somehow if that pressure falls below the vapor pressure at that temperature then local boiling will take place and some vapor bubble will generate. Now, the vapor bubble will continue you know will continue to generate and suddenly it will collapse. Whenever it collapses there will be a you know uh, cavity and the surrounding liquid will rush towards to fill up that cavity and it will create some audible noise and it becomes very detrimental because it may erode some material from the impeller. So, it is not a desirable and it will create an audible noise as I said you from there a pump operator can understand the cavitation has started. So, he should take a preventive measure rather he should immediately stop the pump. So, what I said that if the suction side 
if at the suction side pressure falls the falls below the vapor pressure at that temperature local boiling will takes place local boiling will starts as a result of which bubble will generate and bubble will be accumulated over there and there will be a situation when all the bubbles will be all the bubbles will collapse and then there will be a cavity to fill up that cavity surrounding liquid will rush into the into there and there will be audible noise and this phenomenon eventually erodes some material from the pump impeller and this phenomenon is known as cavitation and this is not a desirable phenomenon as I told you. So, whenever uh, operator will come to know that the cavitation has started by hearing an audible noise, he should st stop the pump and not only that uh, as a design engineer whenever he or she is designing or a system or pumping system, he or, she should, he or she should take care about this effect. I mean he should ensure he or she should ensure that there should not be cavitation at all because it is not it is very detrimental to the pump operation. So, now we have understood that cavitation that means at the suction side pressure should not fall the vapor pressure at the temperature. So, we have to ensure that whenever pump is withdrawing water, pump is drawing water from a sham at the suction side, we need to ensure that pressure should not fall the vapor pressure at the temperature otherwise cavitation may start. So, how we can ensure that pressure should not fall the vapor pressure and to do that we need to know the expression of cavitation and we need to you need to know that what would be the head available at the pump suction side is a pressure head. So, we need to know the total head available at the pump suction side and if the total head falls below the you know uh, that vapor pressure then probably uh, cavitation will start. So, this is the case that I have taken an example suppose HS is the distance HS is the height below the pump datum level that is pump ax impeller axis level from and from where pump is withdrawing some water. And since it is an open to atmosphere, so P8 atmospheric is acting on the sum. Now, what is the head available at the suction side that we need to know? So, if I now apply Bernoulli equation or a steady flow energy equation between let us say this point 1 and 2 suction side, then if PS is the suction side pressure, pressure at the pump suction side at the pump suction side and V s is the velocity of water at the suction side, velocity of fluid at the suction side. Then what is the head available at the suction side? So, head available is total head that is static head plus dynamic head that is static head plus dynamic head that is P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 z. So, this is the total head available at the pump suction side you know that is a static head plus dynamic head. Now, if this head falls below the vapor pressure at the temperature that means, head available at the pump suction side is static plus dynamic head and this head should not fall below the vapor pressure. So, head available at the pump suction side H s. So, this is head available at the pump suction side is equal to P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 z. If this head is less than vapor pressure, the head corresponding to the vapor pressure P V by gamma. So, this is head corresponds to vapor pressure. Now, if P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 z, this should be always greater than P V by gamma. Then we can ensure that there should not be cavitation that means, we, know, we need to know the that means, this quantity that is H s should be always greater than the head corresponds to vapor pressure at that temperature. Then we can ensure that the pump is in a safe condition that means, cavitation should not start. So, we need to know the explicit magnitude of H s by minus P V by gamma that is P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 z 
minus P V by gamma. So, this is the exp expression we need to know. So, this quantity will gives us an information if it is negative then there is a problem cavitation might start if this quantity is positive that means H s is greater than P V by gamma that is the net head available at the suction side is greater than the you know head corresponds to vapor pressure at that temperature then pump is in a safe condition. So, cavitation should not start. This quantity is known as net positive suction head or NPSH. This is very important quantity that we have I have written in the beginning of the you know lecture in the title. So, this is known as net positive suction head that is the suction head that amount of positive suction head the total positive suction head available is the net positive suction head there is a net positive suction head. So, this quantity is an indicative measure of whether cavitation will start or cavitation should not start in a pump operation. If this quantity is positive that is the net positive suction head it will it I mean if this quantity is positive pump is in a safe condition cavitation should not start, but if this quantity is negative then cavitation will start. If I go back to my previous slide and if I apply bundle equation between point 1 and this let us say this is point S at the suction side this is S and this is 1, then I can write I can write and if I take this is a datum level that is a sum level is a datum level, then I can write P atm by gamma plus and also also the sum cross section area is much much greater than the pipe cross section area. So, velocity can be ignored as compared to the velocity in the pipe. So, I can write P atm by gamma plus 0 is equal to P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 g that is the pressure at the suction side at the point s velocity at the suction side at the point s plus the static height that we need to know plus there will be some frictional losses. So, plus H f. So, this is the expression. So, this P atm by gamma is equal to P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 g plus H s plus H f. From there, if we just write the expression of this quantity which is again the head available at the suction side. So, this quantity is the head available at the suction side. Head available at the suction side. So, this H s that is P s by gamma from there I can write P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 g equal to P atm by gamma minus H s minus H f. And if I replace this magnitude, so this is equation 2 and this is equation 1. If I replace the magnitude of 2 in equation 1, then what I can obtain? So, I can write N P s H is equal to P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 g that is the suction head minus head corresponds to the vapor pressure gamma, where this quantity can be written from the equation 2 that is what we have obtained using bundle equation between point 1 and S that is P atm by gamma minus H s minus H f s that is frictional head loss in the suction side minus P v by gamma. Note that we have taken the effect of losses into account in the suction side because I should tell you that whenever pump is installed in a particular station, it is always advisable that the whenever it is drawing water from a sum or from a reservoir, at the end of the suction pipe uh, which is located in the sum, we need to have, we need to put a strainer and also there will be a valve at the suction side uh, and because of the presence of and there might be some bends because of all these you know uh, stuffs that is strainers, valves and bends. Uh, there will be frictional losses and the losses will be taken into account for applying this steady flow energy equation between point 1 and S and this quantity H f s this quantity H f s takes into account all those 
loss I mean uh, losses due to all those uh, uh, stuff like valves you know uh, strainer and uh, bends. So, P ATM by gamma minus HS minus HFS minus PV by gamma this is the NPSH the net positive suction head available at the pump suction side right. I can rearrange this quantity that is P ATM by gamma minus P V by gamma minus H S minus H F S right. So, this is N P S H this is net positive suction head available at the pump suction side. Now, the very important term is that one cavitation factor just like in the previous just like the previous case when you have defined slip when you have quantified the amount of slip we have you know defined one slip factor that is the component of absolute velocity in presence of slip to the component of absolute velocity in tangential direction without slip that is C theta 2 prime by C theta 2. Similarly, we can define one you know cavitation factor which is known as Thomas cavitation factor Thomas cavitation factor sigma which is defined that net positive suction head. So, this is all these terms in net positive suction head are the head represents a unit of head. So, this net positive suction head. So, when you are defining a factor it should be dimensionless. So, we have to define by again a head. So, the each and every term in the expression of NPSH represents a unit of head and we would like to define one factor that is Thomas cavitation factor. So, we should make the you know factor is dimensionless. So, we should define by a quantity head. So, NPSH available the net positive suction head available at the suction side divided by head that is known as Thomas cavitation factor or NPSH. So, this is very important quantity. So, if I write it so that is P ATM by gamma minus P V by gamma minus H S minus H F S divided by H is the Thomas cavitation factor. So, this factor I will now discuss little bit about this factor this factor will give you an indication about that whether cavitation will start or not because ok fine NPSH of course will give you an indication this is an indicative measure of cavitation that is cavitation will start or cavitation should not start that will be you know uh, of that information we can obtain from the expression of net positive suction head. But still now we are defining another factor this Thomas cavitation factor and from where we can discuss about we can tell that ok if what is cavitating zone and what is cavitation free zone. So, that factor is defined the net positive suction head to the head developed by the pump. Now, if we you know write the expression of sigma and this is the Thomas cavitation factor. Now, note it if this expression I mean P ATM by gamma minus P V by gamma minus H S minus H F S by H this is Thomas cavitation factor. So, from there we can again define a critical cavitation factor that is critical sigma critical value of cavitation critical cavitation factor sigma C this is very important. So, the critical cavitation factor sigma C which is defined P ATM by gamma mind it minus P V by gamma minus H S sorry uh, this will be P S by gamma minus H S minus H F S divided by H. So, just I have replaced P V by P S that is the suction pressure. So, whenever this suction pressure that is P ATM by gamma minus P V by gamma minus H S minus H F S by H is a Thomas cavitation factor. So, I am writing a critical Thomas cavitation factor where I am replacing P V by P S. Now, from this two expression I can tell that if sigma greater than sigma c, if sigma greater than sigma c rather I can write in a bit different form this expression I can write P ATM by gamma minus H S minus H F S. So, for a given pump installed in a given system minus P V by gamma divided by H. Here I can write this is P ATM by gamma minus H S minus H F S minus P V by gamma divided by H. So, if we compare this 3 and 4 
if we compare this 3 and 4, so I have I am telling sigma c when I am replacing p v by replacing p v by p s sorry this would be p s. So, I am replacing p v by p s. So, that means when sigma greater than sigma c that is p s greater than p v right. Sigma greater than sigma c if we look at the equation if we look at equation 3 and 4. So, I am telling a critical gravitation factor sigma c and when sigma the thomas gravitation factor greater than the greater than the critical value which implying that p s should be greater than p v then you know this is known as cavitation free operation this is this is cavitation free operation so having a closer look at equation 3 and 4 equations 3 and 4 we can say that if sigma greater than sigma c that means which imply that p s should be greater than p v then it is cavitation free operation but if sigma less than sigma c that is p s when uh, p s less than p v then this is known as cavitating zone cavitating operation so whenever suction pressure the suction side fall below the vapor pressure then sigma will be less than critical value so then cavitation might starts from there i can argue that see here another important quantity is hs and hfs these are very important quantity and from there i will discuss another important issue that if somehow i can make hs positive that is if i make hs i mean minus hs if i can it, it is positive then i can have a relatively you know a safe operation of the pump that means whenever pump is drawing water rather whenever i will discuss now so from this expression i can tell that whenever pump axis level pump datum that is impeller axis is above the is above the water level of the sum whenever pump datum the, rather the impeller axis is above the water level of the sum and if we operate the pump and then it is called the pump is called the negative suction is called negative suction pump is operating pump is running at negative suction negative suction mode that means whenever pump or impeller axis is above the water level of the sum that is the case we call it pump is running at a negative suction mode and in that case it is very you know very important to ensure that cavitation should not occur and we need to take all the preventive measure. So, this is not desirable for the pumping system design if it is not possible at all to have if we need to go definitely that axis pump has to installed above the water level of the sum then of course we have to go for this kind of operation mode that is negative suction of mode otherwise it is not desirable at all for the pumping system design rather when pump datum or impeller axis is below the water level of the sum then pump is running at flooded suction mode it is called at flooded suction that is positive suction. So, that means pump axis or impeller axis is located below the water level at the sum that means we are always having a head available head by the static height atmospheric pressure is there, but whenever impeller axis is located let us say z distance or h s distance below the water level of the sum then we always have that amount of head available and this is known as flooded suction that is pump is running at flooded suction. This is very important rather I should rather as a design engineer everyone should uh, prefer to design a pumping system in a that 
uh, in this mode that the pump should operate in a flooded suction mode. If we design to operate rather if we design to run a pump in the flooded suction mode then we can ensure that okay it is it is safe from this kind of phenomenon that is cavitation should not occur. So, this is always desirable that you know impeller axis or pump datum should be always below the axis rather from below the level of the water level of the sum level of water in the sum. If this is the case then we can argue from the expression that we have de derived in the you know last slide in that case H s will be always positive. So, it will in that case this H s will be positive if H s is positive I mean this entire quantity will be positive this entire quantity will be positive. So, this will add a, a head on the top of the head that is available because of the atmospheric pressure. So, if we install a pump that is pump impeller axis or impeller pump datum is located below the water level of the sum then apart from the atmospheric head available we are having another head available that is equal to the static height that is there. So, in that case uh, we are having a safe operation and we should go rather I should prefer rather I should suggest you that all the designers should design a pumping system in a flooded suction mode to avoid this kind of undesirable phenomenon I mean cavitation, cavitation should not occur. Okay. Now, I will discuss another important factor that as I said you Thomas cavitation factor. Now, Thomas cavitation factor sigma is defined this Thomas cavitation factor is defined sigma is equal to P A T M by gamma minus P S by gamma P V by gamma. P V by gamma minus H S minus H F S divided by H. So, this is the Thomas cavitation factor. Now, if I draw the H versus sigma this Thomas cavitation factor. So, I will get a curve like this I will explain why this is the curve look like this. So, this is sigma C critical. So, if I reduce the value of sigma and whenever sigma is sigma c. So, whenever sigma is equal to sigma c then this is onset of cavitation this is onset of cavitation. The curve look like this. So, if I plot h versus sigma curve then it look like this. So, if I reduce sigma by increasing that is by reducing the suction head the suction pressure the head available the suction side. So, if I reduce the that means, if I draw if I rearrange this equation that is P A T M by gamma minus you know P V by gamma minus plus H S plus H F S divided by H. So, now if I write if I replace P V in terms of P S. So, this quantity if I replace P V by P S, P S by gamma plus H S plus H F S, then this is nothing but the suction head, head available with the suction side. Now, if this quantity I mean is uh, when P S is P V, then probably this is sigma C that is, is onset of cavitation and onset of cavitation means you know local, local boiling starts. that is vapor bubble starts generating starts to generate so when we reduce sigma value by changing this quantity i mean by changing this static head so if i reduce this quantity ps plus ps by gamma plus hs by hfs and whenever it becomes P V by gamma plus H S plus H F S that means, if I reduce sigma C sigma to a sigma C then that is when sigma this quantity reduces and when P S becomes P V then uh, that is onset of cavitation you know low vapor bubble starts. Now, we can see so this is A this is B this is C and this is D again if you see that again if we further reduce sigma value then probably we are having you know a high head generation why it is happening because when sigma is equal to sigma c onset of cavitation vapor bubble starts generate and 
the vapor bubble will be accumulating and it will make the surface very slippy. So, whenever liquid is flowing over the slippy surface, it does not feel the effect of solid surface and the frictional loss becomes less. So, at the onset of cavitation, vapor bubble will start you know, you know, generating and vapor bubbles will be accumulating in a particular place and it will make the surface very slippy. And as if the water is flowing over a slippy surface and it the water does not feel the presence of solid surface and frictional loss will be less. Since the frictional loss is be become you know will be less, uh, the head developed by the pump will be will increase and that is what is represented by the curve BC. Now, see already cavitation started, so the vapor bubble will continue gener you know continue generation and there will be a situation when a huge number of vapor bubble will start blocking the passage and as a result of which. Uh, it the water will face a resistance and it 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 the, the head rise drastically falls. So then head falls drastically and which is represented the bike by carb CD. So we have understood that at the onset of cavitation bubble will start generation. It will make the surface slippy because uh, the vapor bubble will make the uh, in a particular place very you know it will block and it will make the surface slippy and water uh, the fluid won't feel the presence of solid surface. It will eventually reduce the effect of frictional losses and the head develop will increase that is that is represented by BC. Now, since cavitation has already started, so now uh, vapor bubble will continue generation and there will be a situation when huge number of vapor bubbles will block the liquid passage and it will eventually create a huge resistance and as a result of which head drust will drastically fall and that is represented by the curve CD. So, this is the significance of the Thomas cavitation factor that is if sigma beca becomes sigma C is a, this is known as this is known as non cavitating zone this is known as non cavitating zone this is known as non cavitating zone or cavitation free operation while when this zone is known as cavitation free operation, but when sigma c sigma is less than sigma c, this is known as cavitating zone. So, we need to take we should be you know very serious about this undesirable phenomenon. I mean, whenever we are designing a pumping system. So, there are two suggestions. First one is that we should always go for flooded suction mode that is impeller axis should be always below the water level in the sum. So, that apart from the atmospheric head we are having another head corresponds to static height. So, if we run pump in a flooded suction mode we are always safe from this unresolved phenomenon and we always need to check that if sigma less than sigma c then it is a cavitating zone then we should need we need to take into account that how we can reduce the frictional losses how we can reduce the static height so that even if the pump is running in a negative suction mode we need to ensure that frictional losses at the suction side as well as the static height the suction side should be reduced so that pump can be operation without having this kind of undesirable phenomenon i stop here today we will continue uh, our discussion in the next lecture thank you